Hi everyone, Nicholas Poppy, this here from Sunny Cyprus and welcome to today's tutorial. Now this one's a little bit different to what you probably used to see me create, but I am an engineer and I have been repairing devices for over 25 years now. Um, and this particular uh, repair is one which I, I had to do very recently. Um, it was on a, a HP Omen 15 inch, a CE model. And the repair is all about changing the keyboard. Now, yeah, some of you are going to say, well, that's not such a hard repair. But on some devices, it's a ridiculous process. It's a ridiculous process because the keyboard itself is actually uh, held together between the faceplate. And you can see the faceplate is this one here. Some people call it the palm rest. OK, and then you've got a metal plate, which is at the back. That's the top silver thing there. And in between these two, you've got basically this thing here, the keyboard. OK, so the keyboard is actually sandwiched between these two items and it's sandwiched together nice and tightly. And that gives it a nice, um, stiff, very stable feeling when you're typing. But they're sandwiched together using plastic rivets. And these rivets are actually melted on top of that uh, metal plate. So it doesn't have any give. But the problem with that is you can't actually replace the keyboard. Now, I've seen quite a few YouTube videos out there. Um, a lot of people have tried, a lot of people have failed. I haven't found anyone that's actually successfully uh, made this repair and as a permanent repair. Some people have managed to do a repair like this. And it's not just for this device. This is for any keyboard which uses plastic rivets to hold the keyboard structure, let's say, in place. And the main reason why they fail is usually one out of three or four reasons. One of the main reasons is the adhesive that they use to replace those plastic rivets. Uh, the other reason is the anxiety of, you know, uh, being concerned whether they're going to be able to get this to work or not. They don't keep track of everything that they're doing and they don't, they end up not actually um, adhering all of those rivets back, leaving you a mushy keyboard. Other people have actually used um, adhesives which have actually worked, but they haven't been a permanent fix. After about a month or so, um, the keyboard starts getting loose and that's because that sandwich is not tight anymore the adhesive is actually breaking off. So when you are actually using an adhesive, what you're trying to do, you're trying to get an adhesive to actually mold or stick onto uh, another item, but it's not one unit. It's actually one piece sticking onto another piece, and that doesn't hold for too long. And the last reason I find is they're a little bit careless, especially when they're taking off um, this, this face plate, this uh, metal plate at the back. Um, if it doesn't come off nice and flat and straight, and they, they just rip it off, and you get some bends in that, that actually causes some little air pockets, which gives play to the keyboard and it makes the keyboard feel mushy. So what I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how you can replace any plastic riveted keyboard, providing you are methodical in your approach and you take your time with this, okay? So here we go. The first thing that we're gonna do is, uh, we're going to see the, what, what we mean by this keyboard. So on the left-hand side, this one over here, we can see that this is the whole palm rest with the keyboard held together. This is what you would normally have to buy with a plastic riveted keyboard. You have to buy the whole thing. And in some cases, you have to, you can't even buy a replacement. It's part of the whole casing. So the whole, the whole device is damaged. You have to replace the whole thing. Now, you can in many cases by the keyboard itself, but this is not an official fix. For example, in this case, HP does not sell this product as is as a replacement part. The replacement part is this whole unit here. So we need to be able to uh, tear down this palm rest or the face plate and separate these layers. And we need to do this very, very carefully. So let's have a look how we're going to do that. So the first thing you are going to notice is this. When you're going to tear down your keyboard, because the keyboard um, and the, that palm rest or the face placed is one unit, it's on the top, you literally have to rip everything out of your laptop or out of that device, and you need to be left with only that one item. And this is the inside of the device which I had to uh, break down. I'm not gonna go into the tear down because every device is different, but I normally start by removing the things like hard drives, RAM, Batteries, I think battery is the number one thing you're going to remove before you do anything else. Then remove hard disks, RAM. Then you're going to remove things like your fans, 
and take the motherboard out, take out things like speakers and just remove everything and keep track of everything. In this particular case, um, the fan structure at the top here had four different types of screws. So I would take this, this, um, this little unit here. Okay, so we can see we've got one type of screw here, another one here, another one here, and there's another one here. These are three different types of screws here. So I would take that unit Put it on my table. I normally have a big piece of white paper, A3 paper. Put it there and place each screw in the position where it's supposed to go back into. So take pictures as well. That will remind you of you know where everything goes at the end of the day. Okay, so that's the first thing. As I said, one of the biggest things about making this process a success is being methodical and keeping track of everything. Once you've done that, you're going to end up with just this thing here. This is the back end of this palm rest of the keyboard, okay? So this is the back side of it. And we can see here, the this metal plate, which is on the back. And if I zoom into this, you'd be able to see all of these plastic rivets. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these. Can you see all of these things here? These here are the rivets, which are actually holding the keyboard in between that face plate, the metal plate, and then you've got the keyboard in the middle. And these things are actually melted on, they're actually welded on top. So they're like little uh, posts. And once everything fits through, they actually welded on top and it makes that little crown head at the top, which holds everything nice and firm. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is to circle every single one of these rivets, you need to circle them, okay? Now you're gonna say, well, what's the purpose of that? This makes sure that you don't forget to weld any one of these, okay? And if you look, there's quite a lot on this keyboard. There was approximately about 100 of them. Um, so I've got this one here. There's another one here, here, here. And I actually circled every single one. So when I was uh, putting my assembly back, I knew exactly where I had to put a weld. Now you're going to say, aren't they all plastic welds? Well, no, some of these are just holes, okay? So for example, here, this is just a, a simple hole. There's, there's nothing here. So I don't want to make the mistake and actually put a plastic weld in here when I don't have to. Okay, so the next part of the process was removing, removing these rivets. Now I use the Dremel and with, uh, with the Dremel and this grindstone, small grindstone, I had it on low speed. I didn't want it on high speed because I don't want to melt the plastic on top and I don't want to transfer too much heat. So just a low speed and just uh, moving the Dremel backwards and forwards, I just removed the head part of that uh, plastic rivet. And you can see all my circles here where I actually put all these circles going around all these little rivets which I had to remove and then I had to repair. Now, the reason I'm using the Dremel and the grindstone is this. If we think about it like this, this is my, let me just get my drawing pad here. This is your face plate, let's say. This is the bottom part of your keyboard. Well, the top part is your typing, okay? And then you're gonna put your keyboard, goes in the middle. And then on top of that, holding everything together is this metal face plate here. So what happens is from the keyboard at the bottom, from the faceplate or the palm rest, you've got a plastic rivet that goes straight through, predefined holes there. And in manufacturing process, then they melt this on top and that produces this crown on the top, which holds everything together. So that would be your plastic rivet. I'm just gonna color that in, in black, okay? And you get that crown there and that holds it in place so you don't get any play from your keyboard here. So this, this keyboard is held nice and firmly in. Now, to get a good fix when you're replacing this keyboard, you want to try and preserve as much of this rivet, as much of it as possible, so you can then use it to create a new weld. So by using the grindstone, what happens? You end up with a rivet which is flush on the top. You keep the trunk of the rivet, of the rivet like this, okay? And because it's ground down flush with that metal plate, this metal plate can now be lifted and we've kept as much as possible of that rivet. Here's where a lot of people go wrong. I've read some people take the, the metal bracket and they just pull it and it snaps these, these little heads off. The result is you end up with a metal plate which is all bent. 
and this causes um, gaps. So if this this down here is your keyboard, uh, the faceplate, this is your keyboard, and, and this one here is the metal bracket. You get these gaps here, and that causes the keyboard to be mushy. Okay, so in certain areas your keyboard feels firm, in other areas it doesn't feel firm. So you don't want to do that. Another thing people do is they they use a soldering iron to melt this uh, rivet down and you end up with only half a rivet at the end of the day. So it ends up down here because you've lost a lot of that plastic rivet. And while they're melting it, they're actually plying away. They're, they're putting a lever in, in this area here and they're twisting it backwards and forwards to actually lever up this metal plate outwards again that's going to cause some bending of that plate of that metal plate at the back and you want that metal plate to be as straight as possible okay so once you've removed all these rivets using your little grindstone on your dremel tool or whatever other power tool you've got um, you can use a sharp a sharp blade but it's going to be hard it's going to be tricky you're going to end up you know some of these rivets are very tight places so I really do suggest just using a little grindstone like I did there. So once you've done that, the easiest way, the best way to remove the keyboard and that back plate is to place your fingers, as you can see here, place your fingers underneath the keyboard where the keys are and just push gently upwards. This is going to make, help you feel if you've actually left any rivets which you haven't removed the heads off. So um, and just push gently upwards and the whole thing will then release the keyboard and the back plate at the same time and you can see here if i zoom in can you see these these lovely rivets how much of that that area there have a look at that look how much of that trunk of that river we've still got available to us here and here can you see that and all of these rivets here as they've been ground down you can see um, I don't have any nastiness going on there. It's not melted away. It's going to be easy to place the metal bracket again. And I've preserved as much as possible of the original rivet by using this method, by grinding it down instead of melting it. All right, next step. So next step, once you've done that, you're going to be end up with this. You're going to end up with the face plate, which is that one, or the palm rest, the keyboard with palm rest. You've got your old keyboard and you've got your metal back plate, which should be nice and flat, ready for you to use. So the process now is exactly the reverse. But how do we actually recreate those rivets? So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to take your new keyboard. You're going to place that inside here. You're going to place your face plate on top of that there. Make sure everything lines up, push everything down so you get a nice, uh, a nice fitting. Now, the next step is how do we actually um, create those rivets? So I'm going to show you a little video of me actually doing that. Let me just open that up here. So I'm going to start off here. So the first thing you can see, I've already done these rivets and I, I thought about creating the video afterwards. But what you can see here is uh, me, uh, where I've, mailed, I've welded all these little rivets here. I'm going to tell you what I used. I don't use hot glue. Hot glue is is soft it's actually malleable and you're going to get a good fix your keyboard's going to work if you do use hot glue but again at the same time hot glue will not weld with the original rivet and your fix is going to be temporary after about a month you're going to feel some of those rivets have probably released and your keyboard's going to feel mushy would i use a black zip tie because a black zip tie is plastic and once you've melted it and then it hardens, it turns into nice hard plastic. There's no flex. And the good thing is, if you melt the, uh, the zip tie, and with that molten zip tie, you also melt the original part of the rivet and you force it down, they actually fuse together. So instead of having an adhesive bonding on the outside of your rivet, you're actually melting two plastics which can actually bond together and generating a new rivet. So let's see how I do this. So the first thing I do, I take my zip tie here. Now, this was a, a slightly wider zip tie. I didn't have a thin one. So what I did, I just cut it with the scissors so I could make just a thin black strip of that zip tie. And the first process is here, you can see I'm actually just melting that zip tie. I haven't pushed down into the rivet yet. 
I'm using a soldering iron, which is gas powered, and I've got a hot knife on that instead of the soldering iron. You can use the soldering iron, that's absolutely fine. But if you've got an expensive soldering iron, you don't want to melt plastic with it uh, because you will end up damaging that tip. It's going to be a really hard job cleaning that tip so you can actually get solder to stick on it again. So I suggest if you don't have a cheap soldering iron, just get yourself a cheap soldering iron, five, seven, eight euros um, just to do this process. Okay, so the idea is I'm first of all melting the, the plastic of the zip tie so I get a nice molten drop. And then once I've got that, together with the zip tie and my hot knife, I'm going to push down. You're going to see the process now. I'm pushing down. Now I'm pushing down with my hot knife or my soldering iron into the rivet so the rivet actually melts as well. So the rivet and the plastic, the melted plastic of the zip tie are now fusing together. And at the same time, with my finger here, I'm pushing that back plate down. And I'm going to hold it down, keep holding it down. And once I've fused it together, there you go, I'll just make a little head on top. I'm going to blow. And that basically cools down the rivet. And once that rivet, that plastic has cooled down, it's solid. I can then release the pressure. And that's going to make sure I get a really good sandwich between that back plate, that metal back plate, the keyboard and the palm rest or the face plate at the bottom. And that's going to be permanent. It's not going to release because it's plastic melted with plastic. It's not an adhesive stuck on top of plastic. OK. You don't if you've got a thin tip soldering iron, be careful. You don't want to push down too much because you end up melting all the way through your keyboard. And you're going to have like a dimple or hole on the other side of your keyboard. OK, and that's basically the process. That's basically it. Now all you have to do is simply put everything back together again. And you should have a solid keyboard, which will be a permanent fix, should be as strong as it was when you bought it, because those rivets are actually uh, basically it's a new rivet for you. And that will work. So if you are going to attempt this, please be very methodical. Uh, take your time. It's going to take you a couple of hours at least. I would say around about three hours uh, minimum, probably four hours to be safe, to strip your entire device, depending on what device it is. Taking down the heads of those rivets with your Dremel tool and a little grinding stone, marking everything, putting everything in the right place, removing that back plate really gently so we don't bend it, and then re-welding every single rivet and putting everything back together again. But it's a fantastic little project if you want to give it a go. And hey, what have you got to lose? Your keyboard's not working anyway. So give it a go. Save yourself some bucks. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.